Tonight, you'll be seeing the receipts I've obtained from not just one source, but from many sources, a letter, emails, and a betrayal. Betrayal not only to the donors and premium subscribers of Church Militant website, but betrayal of staff that worked at St. Michael Media, but oddly, no betrayal to those that worked at Church Militant. All of a sudden, Vorce discloses the two nonprofits have always been separate. Huh? We'll look at an email I was sent that Michael Vorce authored. It will give you a sense of how he never takes responsibility and how he threatens others to get his way. It also shows force hasn't changed one bit. It makes me wonder if all of this was premeditated by Voris. Think through this. In 2016, when E. Michael Jones was going to expose Voris for his past homosexual life, Voris broadcasts a video admitting his past. But he's a changed man now. Please donate to Church Militant. Here we are seven years later in November 2023. Excuse me. <coughs> Forrest broadcast another teary eyed confession that he's fallen back into the sins of his past. And this time he's resigning while reflecting back that he had considered resigning many times before. So has Voris been lying this whole time? This time, Voris says it's going to be different because he's going to get the help he desperately needs. Well, everyone, I didn't buy it in 2016, and I certainly didn't buy it in 2023. All of this will come together when we dive into the emails. One more thing before we get started. There are many former employees watching tonight. Please keep them in your prayers. It's not their fault for what happened. It's all Michael Voris's responsibility. He was the one that put people in leadership positions he could dominate and control. And I'd like for you to stick around to the end because I'm tossing around an idea that I'd like to get your opinion on. So would you stick around to the end? All right, let's go into these emails. First, I have to take a drink. And I will be um, answering your questions tonight. Okay, somebody says your voice is being echoed and repeated. That is not coming from me. Um, that would be coming from your end because I've already tested all the equipment and everything. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Here's what we're going to cover today, or tonight, I should say. Jules Gomez, Barbara Toth, Simon Rafe, The Promise, The Betrayal, St. Michael v Media versus Church Militant update on the Delaire versus Voris lawsuit. So we got a lot to get through. Is anybody else having problems? Oh, Gracie, okay, I see you said problem resolved. All right, thank you all. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about Jewel Go Jules Gomez, Barbara Toth, and Simon Rafe. As you all know, Jules was the Roman correspondent at um, Church Militant. He was in Rome, and he worked at the same time I was there. He's worked all through this, this time period. Well, 
he's now working for the new church militant 2.0. And so is Barb Toth, who we were always, we were never supposed to acknowledge her by her name. She went by uh, Martinez. um, Oh, now I forgot. Um, uh, Martina something, um, when she was reporting at church militant, I just had a, a brain fog there, but she came out Martina, uh, Moisky. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Dune. <laughs> but she is the person, uh, behind Martina that did reporting at church militant. It's really Barb Toth. Now all of a sudden she is using her real name, not her um, authored name. And uh, guys, Simon Rafe appears to be working at the new Church Militant 2.0. And that's the first thing I want to show you because I want to thank one of my followers who sent me this email exchange today confirming what, you know, we all thought was to be true, but there's, there's more to this story. So hang in there with me. Barbara says, I am Barbara Toth. I never sent that email. What, Barbara? You never sent that email? Oh my gosh, it just gets weirder and weirder, folks. Okay, Barb, my apologies. So you you tell me. <laughs> Barbara, <laughs> I am. I got the email. It had your name right there on it. So you're saying you are not working for Church Militant 2.0, Barb? Will you please comment on that? Wow. Barb says, I used to be a church militant premium subscriber. They used my name to solicit donations. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Barb, I apologize to you. Here I thought you defected. (laughs) She says, no, I am not working for CM 2.0. I so apologize to you, Barb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling us and correcting me because I got the email too. It had your name on there. Oh my gosh. That is unbelievable. Thank you, Barb. Do you guys see what's going on here? Now they're using a former employee's name to solicit donations. So Barbara, was that an old um, article that you wrote by chance? Just let me know about that. So yeah, the the um, someone said right here, the emails are being sent by Mailchimp, an application that manages mailing lists and marketing material. Yes, um, it's Karen. It's the same Mailchimp um, that they used at the old Church Militant. It is. So she said she did not write that article. Okay. She did. That has nothing to do with her. Barb, I am so glad you were on tonight. And, you know, I'm just going to apologize to you again. I just so apologize to you. So let's get to Simon. So is Jules being used too? Barbara, do you know, is Jules being used too? I'll let, I'll give you a chance to, um, to, to think about that. Uh, Barb, I'm going to reach out to Jules and find out. I assume since they were using former employees' names that they were working for 
Voris. I mean, how deceptive can it get, folks? Oh, it does. We'll we'll continue. Okay. All right. So let me show you this email that I received. Okay, Trey says, Trey Blanton, you all remember Trey Blanton. He was on, he, he, I worked with him at Church Militant. He was, in my opinion, one of the best um, reporters that we had there. And I was really sorry to see Trey go. He says, Jules shared an article on Facebook that he wrote for the new website. Okay, thank you, Trey. All right, thank you. All right, so let me show you the email that I was sent by a a follower of mine. Let me get that up there. Okay, look at the date. It was today. On Monday, April 1st, 2024, and I blacked out the name. And this follower of mine sent an email to the new church militant email address and asked that um, I'm thinking here for a second and asked the new church militant, are they a new entity or are they the old church militant? And Simon answers saying, dear, and I won't say his name, this is the same organization, but church militant is not and never was shutting down. St. Michael's Media, a separate company previously associated with church militant is shutting down. The confusion was caused by St. Michael Media sending out emails with our name on them. God bless Simon. So apparently Simon is now answering emails for the new church militant. Now, when I worked there, there was never any separation between the two. And we know from our past reporting that uh, St. Michael's Media is a 501c3. And in 2020, the old uh, church militant uh, came out of this uh, 501c3 and moved into a 501c4 because they were moving away they are, I should say, they were moving into a more political reporting atmosphere. So they switched Church Militant to a 501c4. And that was the only distinction. I mean, we were never told that. We had no idea. We thought that St. Michael's Media was an umbrella of Church Militant. Now, all of a sudden, the story is they were always a separate company. Folks, they didn't tell us that. (laughs) Albert says, April Fools, is someone punking you? Probably. Probably. (laughs) You're right, Albert. (laughs) So it's interesting that this came from Simon. All right. So that's my point on Simon. And then... Here's something I also received. This is a very, very long um, email that Simon sent. And this was back in December. So this is crazy because I want you to listen. There's, I want you to listen to this. And I'm going to read it off my phone because it's a little, I couldn't capture the entire thing. So give me a minute here. So in this first slide, it says, and remember, this is from Simon. See what you notice through this whole 
scenario, see what you notice. As you know, Michael Voris was a friend of mine. I have described myself somewhat fictitiously as his only oldest and best friend. His sinfulness did not particularly upset or scandalize me. All men sin and fail. I know this well of myself. Or all men sin and fall. I know this well of myself. Since the revelation of his fall, however, I have had time to reflect on his actions, not that particular sin, but his wider and previous actions. I will not dwell on them. Many of them you know. His abusive behavior, his dictatorial, man, uh, his dictatorial management style, his countermanding of decisions, his interference with operations, and his refusal to engage in prayer or come into the office. Here's part two. There was a number of private actions he took against me, words he said and things he did, which deeply hurt me. He marginalized me as chief of staff and chairman of the board, making it clear I was merely a figurehead. It was this that led me to resign both of those positions. Funny, he never told us that. Whenever complaints were brought to him, he never told us any of this. Even after that, when I moved into a different position, he continued to dismiss and denigrate my work, and me. He was, as Christine Niles is who he's referring to, Christine Niles, has said, not the man I once knew. We know why he was that way, but he does not excuse it. But it does not excuse it. And reflecting on the events of recent weeks, it has come to my conclusion that Voris did not act out of malice, but rather from a place of pain. I cannot hold it against him no more. Let me get to the next one. I cannot hold it against him no more than I could hold a dog guilty of biting me when it was injured. Let me stop right there, folks. There's been a lot of people that have been sexually abused, that have been fighting their demons that never behaved like Michael Vores. Okay. Yes, the man uh, had an abusive past, but he did not then, and he still is not confronting it. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. But it is a fact that if Vores had attempted deliberately and with malice and with all his intelligence to take steps that would damage and destroy things I love and have worked to build, he could not have done it more perfectly. He has destroyed my friendship with him. He has destroyed my wife's friendship with him. He has damaged this apostolate. His actions have placed me in the position of being blamed for much of it and have damaged my reputation. Well, Simon, you never listened to us. And then we'll go on. Sorry, hold on, folks. There's I've got a ton of slides here. He may, well, he may very well cost me my job, which means I may lose my house, or rather, I may lose Lisa's house, the one that she has wanted and dreamed of all her life. At the very least, my retirement plans may be delayed, which, due to Lisa being older than I, will spoil our plans we have worked to achieve. He has caused me stress, which has harmed the relationship I have with my wife. To say I bear him no ill will is likely inaccurate. I do not wish to, and I recognize I should not, but I am only human. In any case, I can no longer be friends with him. I cannot allow myself and those I love be harmed by him any further. I have blocked his number and email and will not speak with him. 
I, I, I working all this through, I have been distracted and emotional for which I apologize unreservedly. This has caused me to facilitate between wanting to stay here and wanting to run away. I have received nothing but support and kindness from the board and staff. I've received many expresses of gratitude and repeatedly been looked at for leadership or inspiration and so forth. That is humbling. Oh, he's the last person we look towards for leadership. It would be wrong of me to say I do not desire to leave, but it would be wrong of me to go. We're almost done. I have said to the board privately, both collectively and individually, I will serve here in whatever capacity the board desires for as long as they desire. I will serve the staff for as long as the board wishes me to. I would urge any staff member who would prefer I leave or who does not consider my presence valuable to approach the board. This is not a passive aggressive thing. I haven't heard anything negative from people to my face, nor would you, Simon. Everyone was afraid to approach you because you were so volatile. I haven't heard anything negative from people to my face or email but I want the staff to know I serve the board and the board will listen to you. Again, I apologize for my emotional state. I apologize for my vacillation and frustrated anger. That was not professional me and I should not have done it. The initial period of my serving as chief of staff was the happiest of my career. I cannot speak to your reaction to it, but I was fiercely proud of you all. I still am, and unless the board and staff want otherwise, I am going nowhere. God bless, Simon. So he's saying that the same way as the other uh, email. So here's my question, folks. What do you notice about that rant? Like all of Simon's emails, they went on for days. And like all of Simon's emails, they were only about one subject, himself. Does he even acknowledge the pain the former employees are going through? Does he think he's the only one that's out of a job? Apparently not, Simon. Looks like you're working at Church Militant 2.0. He doesn't acknowledge anything that has happened to the former employees. There are young men who have families, young families that can't pay their mortgage now. And all Simon's worried about is he can't retire when he had planned on it. Simon doesn't have any children. He doesn't have any responsibility. Neither does Voris. I I'm so angry by this, but, and we're going to, you're going to see me get even angrier <laughs> as we get into what happened. All right. So let me get to the next emails. This was sent to the staff on February 15th, February 15th. So I'm sorry I can't make it any bigger, but let me get that for you. Hold on, folks. I got to get it so I can read it to you. I try to get this a little bigger and I was having a hard time. Here it is. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you will notice at the end, it's signed by their Aaron Gentry people operations was their new HR person for a minute. Couldn't, couldn't hire one until the bottom fell out though. So on February 15th, this was said to everyone at Church Militant St. Michael Media. 
It is with a heavy heart that I must confirm the significant changes impacting St. Michael's media announced yesterday. Notice he does not say church militant. After careful consideration and evaluation of our financial standing, it has become evident that St. Michael Media is no longer financially viable to sustain normal business operations. As a result, we regret to inform you that our organization will cease its media operations effective February 29th, 2024. This decision was not made lightly, and we understand the profound impact it has on you and your family. We want to express our deepest gratitude for your hard work, dedication, and contributions to our Catholic apostolate over the years. Your commitment made a difference, and we are immensely grateful for your efforts. In recognition of your service, we are committed to providing severance payments to all employees who remain on staff until the secession of operations on February 29, 2024. These severance payments will be processed through our normal payroll system and will cover your employment until the end of March 2024. So everyone that stayed until the bitter end, they were being told that they were getting a severance pay. Additionally, we will provide resources and support to assist you during this transition period. I will be, I'm just going to go blah, 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 because that's just noise. This news is distressing and disappointing. We are committed to supporting you through this challenging time and keeping you updated with any possible employment opportunities develop, blah, blah, blah. Again, not one mention of church militant, okay? Interesting, huh? And I'll tell you this, my guess is the former employees didn't pay much attention to that because no one knew until March 30th that the two were divided, that the two were separated. Nobody knew that. So let's get into the next part of this folks. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, please note, this happened yesterday, March 31st at 10.08 p.m. from Michael Voris. Gentlemen, after conferring with counsel, I am giving you an opportunity to issue a retraction to everyone you sent that libelous email to accusing me of being responsible for staff not receiving severance. So let me go to that, but I wanted you to hear that first. And we'll get back to that letter. Hold on. Wrong one. Hold on. There's a bunch of them, folks. That's why I'm... I thought I had these in order. Maybe I didn't. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This was on Wednesday, March 27, 4.25 p.m. So keep that in mind. Wednesday, March 27, 4.25 p.m. Hello, dear friends. Dave and I want to reach out to confirm that you will indeed receive your final severance checks on the 30th. We understand this marks the end of an era for all of us, and we want to express our gratitude for your understanding during this transition. 
Unfortunately, it seems donations have ceased altogether. Well, they should have. They shut down the website on March 15th. In regards to the status of St. Michael's Media, Dave has been tirelessly working on organizing the furniture and equipment. We've made arrangements with an auction house to sell off all remaining items. Dave Nunley and Mike Sherry are the two sitting board members, just so you know that part. While it's bittersweet news, we wanted to share that the chapel is being dismantled. However, we're pleased to announce that the statues of St. Joseph Mary and St. John the Baptist have found a new home at St. Basil the Great Catholic Church in East Point. Father Fedua, a distant relative of James Fedua, has revitalized the parish and plans to build an adoration chapel. Our statues and even the monstrance will find a place of honor there. Additionally, the altar railings are being donated to the adoration chapel. Entering the building is certainly a somber experience. Knowing we won't be seeing each other regularly anymore, however, warms our heart to see some familiar faces stopping by to chat with Dave or Linda Hand pure, purely out of friendship. Andy and Veronica Vance managed to complete three episodes of Extraordinary Road, which will be soon released on the YouTube channel. Today marks the premiere of the first episode at 6 p.m. Why bother? They're shutting down. Yes, it did. The first one did. But why bother? If you are anticipating opportunities with Truth Army, I regret to inform you that due to Patmos suing Truth Army, fundraising has been halted, and it should have been, consequently affecting job openings. I hope you've been exploring other avenues for employment. If you need a reference, please don't hesitate, blah, blah, blah. I reported on this Patmos uh, lawsuit a few weeks ago. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll be able to find it there. Following the auction April, uh, in April, Dave and I will proceed with signing the dissolution paperwork for St. Michael's Media, closing this chapter of our lives. I talked about that on the last video that I was looking for the state of Michigan where St. Michael's Media would fi will file uh, a dissolution um, paperwork to close St. Michael's Media, but one was not filed for church militant, nor do they talk about it. So this is the next one I want to show you. I know I went through that fast, folks. Bear with me. All right. The first one I read to you was at four something in the afternoon. This is on the, the same day, Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 at 654 p.m. I apologize for the inconvenience this is going to cause. We had the money all set up and it was lined up. During my divorce, during Mr. Vore's tenure with St. Michael's Media, he used his personal American Express to be used by the managers of St. Michael's Media. For the life of me, I will never understand that. Phil wasn't hired until after March 15th and didn't know this was done. We had understood that the American Express belonged St. Michael's Media. After stepping down from St. Michael's Media, Mr. Voris did not dissociate the organization's managers from his personal American Express account, nor did he review the account statements. Okay, folks, this was his personal American Express card, and he didn't review his statements for four months. He didn't go online and check his balance. But I digress. Let's uh, keep going. Learning of the amount owed, I reached out to Jim Graham, who subsequently contacted Mr. Vores. In response, Mr. Vores threatened legal action against all managers that held an American Express card, as well as Phil and myself, 
citing wire fraud and menacing us with federal charges unless his American Express bill was settled in full immediately. Dave Nunley was brought into the discussion and attempted to negotiate a partial payment of $10,000 from us, plus any additional funds St. Michael's Media would receive from the auction after settling with the lair. Unfortunately, Mr. Voris was unwilling to compromise, doubting the financial outcome of the auction would suffice. Consequently, Phil and I were forced to halt payroll operations in order to sell the balance on Mr. Voris' personal American Express account. I deeply regret to inform you about this. As the result, the planned severance payment will not be issued. I can't even begin to tell you how this has put the employees who stay to the bitter end, the position that they chose to pay Michael Vorce's American Express card instead of doing the right thing for those employees that they promised, that they promised that they would pay them a severance. But here's the kicker. All the church militant people did get their severance. So it goes right back to months ago when Christine Crisplieb and I were talking about the two nonprofits. Who works for St. Michael's Media? Who works for Church Militant? Nobody knew. Nobody knew. I didn't know. I pulled my um, 1099 and my W-2 from 2021 and 2022. It says right on there, St. Michael's Media. I don't know if that went into the St. Michael's Media um, employee income or whether it went into Church Militant. But it clearly says on mine, St. Michael's Media. So until this very end, even the employees didn't know who they were really working for. I suspected that because if we were hired for the evening news, that would have made sense then if we were in the church militant bucket. I don't know. None of us know. I have reached out to a lot of the former employees, and they don't know. I mean, they can't even be transparent about who you work for. I, I just, oh my gosh, it's just so despicable. I cannot wrap my head around how could anyone support these people? It, it gets worse. It gets worse, folks. Let me go. Let me continue with the next emails, okay? So this is the letter I began with on March 31st. Oh my gosh, Shazam. At 10 o'clock at night, Voris has consulted with his attorneys. Now he has an attorney. And by the way, that was the news flash for the Dallaire lawsuit. That's the new news is Voris has someone representing him now for the Dallaire lawsuit. And in that lawsuit, he has never taken responsibility for anything. Just like, as you'll see in this email, he doesn't take responsibility here. After conferring with counsel, I'm giving you an opportunity to issue a retraction to everyone you sent that libelous email to accusing me of being responsible for staff not receiving severance. Well, Michael, you are responsible. Your retraction must be issued by noon Eastern time, Thursday, March, well, this says March 28th, or official legal action will be taken against both of you individually, not as St. Michael's Media. Your re well, you know why? Because St. Michael's Media doesn't have any money. Your retraction needs to be very clear that you were remiss in not monitoring financial matters to the degree you should have as board members not giving sufficient instruction to your bookkeeper to immediately stop processing charges on my personal card, and that is your solely your errors and lack of attention to duties that resulted in insufficient funds to meet payroll. Think about that. For four months, he was clueless that charges were being made on his personal 
American Express card. Do you really believe that? I don't. It needs to be very explicit that you charged or allowed to be charged tens of thousands of dollars to my personal card after my resignation, which I did not authorize, and that such actions constitutes criminal theft and wire fraud on your part. Michael, why didn't you just have American Express issue a new card when you knew that all these people were using that American Express card? Why didn't you stop those reoccurring payments on your American Express card? It was yours. It's your responsibility. This mess is entirely your making. It has nothing to do with me. You get it, folks? You called me yesterday afternoon after I became aware of your chicanery and proposed a ridiculous compromise which had the very real possibility of leaving me holding the bag for your incompetence, malfeasance, or whatever it is. He hired these people. He put them all in leadership position. And now he's backwalking it all. All, I began proposing an alternative, and you abruptly ended the call and sent out your liabus email to duck responsibility. Noon ET is your deadline. Thank you. P.S. To the staff copied on this email, please feel free to share with other staff impacted whose emails I don't have. Oh, but he's got donors' emails. Likewise, there is money in the account to make at least partial payroll, which you have a right to demand since a letter was sent to you saying you would receive severance. How did Michael know that? Hmm. Additionally, assets are being sold at auction in April, the proceeds of which need to be earmarked to make you each whole regarding your legally promised severance. You should demand an accounting from the board where those proceeds will go since you have a claim on them. Well, Michael, why didn't you ever demand an audit on the books? Huh? Why didn't you do it? All right. Here's the next letter. This is a response from Michael Sherry. Dear all, and I'm sorry if this is not large enough for you to read. I offer my sincere apologies to Michael Vores for any implication in my previous email that he was to blame for the inability to issue severance payments. At no point from November 2023 to the present Did any board member realize that the transactions on the American Express card were being charged to Mr. Voris's personal account? Interesting, they're calling him Mr. Voris. Should there have been any oversight or dismissive comments about reimbursing Mr. Voris for his American Express charges, we extend our apologies to Voris. There have been reoccurring charges established over the years being made to Mr. Voris' American Express card After discussing this with our bookkeeper, Mr. Hapala, which is Phil Hapala, I contacted Mr. Graham to facilitate a conversation with Mr. Vores regarding the situation. Mr. Graham arranged a conference call at 5 p.m., which included our bookkeeper. It was imperative that Mr. Vores be compensated for this oversight, which he was previously unaware of. In the process of rectifying this situation for Mr. Vores, severance payments were unfortunately impacted. Yeah, because Vores, Vores needs it more than all of his employees that uprooted their life to come live in godforsaken Detroit and work for him. Oh, yeah, let's make sure Michael Vores is whole. Who cares about the employees that had to uproot their lives? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so angry about this. With the dissolution of St. Michael's Media, we are marshalling the remaining assets and liquidating said assets for the benefit of creditors. Upon completion of the liquidation of the assets, the boards will review creditor claims and make a prorated rated distribution to creditors. Your patience and understanding during this process are greatly appreciated. So let me just say this. Whatever money is left will be divided up and they'll get pennies on the dollars. 
So then Simon has to chime in. And it says, and I'm not sure what the date of this email is. I think it's the same day. I provide the following information in as neutral fashion as I can. Why is he chiming in on this when he just is answering emails that are going to the new church militant? It is based on my own analysis research and should not constitute formal advice. We were told in our severance letter sent from Aaron that we would be paid severance. It was described as regular payroll payments on the 15th and 30th of March. We were told in emails from St. Michael's Media Board we would receive severance. It was described in the same way. Many of us were told verbally or other communications the same. St. Michael Media Board told all subscribers, donors, and supporters in an email yesterday that their donors generously allowed St. Michael's Media to pay all staff severance through the end of March. Why would they do that? Why would they still be trying to get donations? The severance promise was made conditionally on remaining employee employed throughout the end of February, but that, per my legal research, makes it an enforceable contract. Of course, it's an enforceable contract coming from an HR department. Something was required in return for the severance. That's not true. So I've been in many situations. I've been downsized nine times in 17 years when I was in the insurance marketplace because of acquisitions and mergers with companies. They would come in and buy small regional companies that I worked for, and then they would call us all in, sit us down, tell us that you were all being laid off, give us our severance package. We had to sign a waiver that's, that, that agreed to the terms that we wouldn't sue them so we could get our severance, okay? Um, so I get state by state may be different, but it's not, you don't get severance just because you stay till the end. There's all kinds of conditions for giving severance. And it says, this is, that is information which I have and which I provide as information to all persons on this email thread. I understand from various private conversations that efforts are being made to pay severance payments. Well, sure, on which I found out today, the church militant people, however they divided that up, got the severance payment. Not anybody from St. Michael's Media got the severance. Which tells me that the money was in church militant, not St. Michael's Media. Donations went to church militant. Premium subscriptions went to church militant. The only thing I know that generated revenue on St. Michael's media side was when they did the retreat at sea. I don't know if they made money on that. I assume they did. Um, the sell the sales of all of the books and tapes from the store. Okay. With reference to the requested retraction, it is my understanding based on various communications that the sequence of events is as follows. I request the board or others or others correct any misapprehensions I have. An American Express card was established in Boris's name some years ago. This card or account, as there were multiple cards drawing on it, was used for legitimate per business purposes. It was paid off at a variable cadence over the years, but it was paid off and remained in good standing. The cards have been used since approximately Thanksgiving for legitimate business expenses for St. Michael's Media. Since approximately Thanksgiving, payments have not been made with sufficient cadence to completely pay off the debt, leaving approximately, are you ready? $60,000 outstanding on the card. <laughs> the St. Michael's Media Board was unaware the card was registered to Voris. How could they not 
know that. (laughs) They have all been with him since the beginning. I don't know. I mean, I know Mike Sherry has been with him forever. Surely Susan Vance and all of them knew. Wow. And Simon, by the way. The cards have been used approximately, okay, I said that. When they and Voris became aware of this, a demand for payment was made, which was made, but which used up funds for severance. I do not wish to speculate what the St. Michael's Media Board plans was for the debt when they believed it was associated with St. Michael's Media, not Voris. Therefore, by my analysis, that at no time did Voris use the American Express card for anything for himself. Well, no, he probably used it for the new church militant 2.0 and certainly not appropriate. And that all charges were legitimate business expenses related to St. Michael's medium. Sherry's letters should be read as implying otherwise. Sherry's letter could be read as implying otherwise. I believe a retraction is appropriate. (laughs) I would ask personally and without presuming to represent any of my fellow former staff, the St. Michael's Media Board decisions immediately the following information. Current cash on hand on St. Michael's Media possess. So how much money do they have? All outstanding debts St. Michael's Media has to settle. The cost of the final save severance payroll. Those are all legitimate questions, everyone. However, neither Mike Sherry nor anyone else has responded to Simon. Then he goes on to say, there's an additional piece of information which I provide. Approximately 23,000 is the current total of active recur- recurring donations held by St. Michael's Media through Antidote. So approximately 23,000 is the current total of active reoccurring donations. Why are they continuing the reoccurring donations? If none none of them are canceled prior to being charged, some of them will be by donors, the St. Michael media will realize that amount of money, less fees, as this will become income made in April, half will go to Delaire. However, if St. Michael's media does not cancel these donations and continue to receive them, St. Michael's media will be recipients of perhaps 10,000 net, which could be used to pay staff severance. The rest of it is just nonsense. So it looks like they are continuing to accept donations. I, I, I just can't wrap my head around that, folks. I just can't do it. All right. That's what I had for you tonight. Now I'll go to your comments and questions. So Dr. Thompson said, if you unsubscribe from an email list, they can't email you again unless you give them permission to do so. That's correct, Dr. Thompson. You could report them as spam. And and again, everyone, here's the million-dollar question that's still out there. Who owns the email list and who owns Church Militant? We already know in the Church Militant 2.0 that um, Michael took took a um, video from Church Militant's YouTube channel and used it on the Church Militant site on the new church militant site. So who owns this stuff? (coughs) I was told, let me get another drink. I 
I was told that Voris is now claiming, I was told this from many people, that Voris is now claiming if it looks like him, if it's a likeness to his image, he's taken it. <laughs> well, Voris, or yeah, Voris, all of those are you. We all know that. <laughs> it's not a likeness, it's you. Okay. Let's see. Barb Toth says, I have never heard of Martina Moisky. I've never written anything for CM or CM 2.0. I'm an innocent bystander. So are you saying, Barb Toth, that you are not the Barb Toth that worked at Church Militant? Is that what you're saying? Okay, now I'm really suspicious. Now I'm really suspicious of who you are. Dune says there was absolutely a person at CM named Barbara Toth who wrote under the pseudonym Martina Moisky. That's absolutely correct, Dune. That's absolutely correct. I don't know who's playing games with me right now, but that is absolutely correct. Anybody, anyone else notice that the comments on God and Country blog are being curated to remove any negative or questioning comments? That is absolutely true, Karen. So there was a um, post, a very eloquently written um, post by Catholic 414, who I suspect is a former church militant employee, calling Michael out. I mean, just really calling Michael out. And then this Michelle Campbell uh, commented on that post and said that uh, sounds like you're troubled or something like that. Then someone else commented to this uh, Michelle Campbell, sounds like you're a cult member. And when I looked this morning, her comment was deleted. And so was the comment from the person that says, looks like you're a cult member. So, yeah, there are comments that's being, uh, that's being, um, deleted. I, absolutely. There was a bunch of negative comments, Karen, um, when Michael first posted. And if you noticed on this new email, he's going as Gary Michael Voris now. All of a sudden, he's using his full name. So, um, let's see. Homer says, I thought CM was supposed to shut down. According to the Dallaire lawsuit, St. Michael Media had said that Church Militant was shutting down the end of April. Apparently, that's not true, Homer. Gracie says, looks like old Simon and Michael Vores are both narcissists. All they are worried about is themselves. This is absolutely disgusting. That's exactly right. Lou says, thank you, Lou. Hi, Lou. Uh, Lou and I follow each other on X. He was all over the place in that message. He threw Michael Voris under the bus to some extent while making himself out to be a martyr. Good point, Lou. You're absolutely right. 
JM, isn't Simon going to acknowledge how he's treated church militant St. Michael media supporters like crap and apologize for that? Absolutely, JM, he has. I've gotten tons of emails from people telling me how poorly Simon treated them for asking a question. And, you know, no, there wasn't an employee in there that was ever going to approach Simon because of the way he treated us. Um, Lisa, I'm confused. Simon said he blocked Forrest's emails and number, but now he's working with Forrest again. Yeah, it shocked a bunch of us, a bunch of the former employees. It shocked them too, because, you know, I read what Simon said, that he was blocking his number and everything. And then I showed you the response here. This was church militant. 2.0's email address and he's addressing a question from one of my followers and it says god bless simon could there be two simons like there's two barb toff i don't know i don't know but i suspect it is the same simon Blocks LTL. What did Michael Voris do that was scandalous leading to his resignation? Well, I've made about 30 YouTube videos about this. Blocks. Um, so I don't know how you missed them, but you might want to go back and view those videos just to, for those that are new that have not heard this, I'll just go through it very briefly. So he apparently resorted back to his old homosexual ways, but that's just one part. That's just one part. He broke the morality clause. Church militant St. Michael's media was never clear what he did, but there was enough within the organization that he did that was abominable, abominable. He was texting half-naked pictures to staffers, to donors. Um, these pictures were uploaded to the company, uh, platform. So anybody could go in there and see him. He was, um, grooming, uh, young staffers, um, which I personally saw many of us personally saw Simon was aware of it. Uh, well, let's just say the board was completely aware of it. Didn't do anything about it. They didn't want to stop the gravy train. Um, he was a boss. So keep that in mind, a boss that's sending out half naked pictures to his staffers. He was volatile. He yelled and screamed at people, not just an outburst, but hours on end. He was humiliating staff, all of that. So much there. It was work place harassment that's what he caused harassment within the workplace he constantly i mean it in my opinion it was always best when he wasn't there everybody walked on eggshells around him you know don't talk to michael you know don't ask michael a question everybody walked on eggshells trying to contain it all So I hope that answered your question, Blocks. A lot more, but that gives you the cliff note version. So this Barb Toth says... I don't know if it's the same Barb Toth. Are the donations of CM 
is soliciting as a 501c4 organization going towards severance pay for the former CM employees. The former CM, CM employees, as I've been told, has been paid. It's the St. Michael media folks <clears throat> that have not been paid their severance. And I don't know who falls into what camps because we were never told. Christine says, hi, Christine, Chris sleep. She is, Christine, thought you were moving. <laughs> She's on her way to um, her hometown. She's moving out of Detroit on her way home. Christine says, Michael was stingy. Employee benefits were neg negligible. Thank you, Christine. That's exactly right. Bare minimum, folks, if any. Karen says, Milo said on his Telegram channel, he talked to Voris about how he was mistreating and underpaying the employees and Voris didn't take it well. Milo also talked about um, to Voris uh, about um, how he was grooming people and it was obvious and Michael didn't like that either. So <clears throat> I'm coming to find out more and more that what we were told at Church Militant, why? Um, Milo was banned from the campus is not true. I'm finding out that more and more. I hope that I can bring you some more information on that. Okay, where is Terry Carroll in all of this? I do not know. I'm sorry, I do not know. <clears throat> Tom says, tough for Simon and Michael Voris to get your hands on a honey bucket and get a real job. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? And Joseph says, I saw a lame video on the Church Militant YouTube channel. I was surprised it didn't mention any of the problems. No, they've never been transparent at all. Not at all. So there's never, even with the employees. Matter of fact, everyone, I have had more of the former employees tell me they've learned more about Church Militant and St. Michael's Media through my videos than they ever knew. There was lots of things they were, we were kept in the dark about everything. Ginger says, what has happened to Dr. William Mahoney? Um, I am trying to find that out. And I, and I'm glad you brought that up, Ginger, because this is what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about doing a show for and and let you guys know where all the church militant people landed, where they're at. Many of them are still unemployed. And when I say church militant, I mean St. Michael's Media Church Militant. We never referred to ourselves as St. Michael's Media. We always referred to ourselves as church militant. Um, so, so at the 11th hour... They're now saying, oh, no, 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 it's always been separate. Well, it was never referred to that in that way inside the studio or outside the studio. Um, so anyhow, I'm thinking about doing a show and letting everybody know where everybody is and the ones that are still looking for jobs, just to give you an idea of what's happened to them. Because I get questions all the time about, you know, um, what happened to Kim or what happened, um, you know, here or there. So I'm trying to get all of that together and get it to you. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Vincent says, I think Mike Vores board members, key employees were paid a split income between 1099 independent contractors and as direct employees, W-2. I saw some nonprofits do this to hide income from IRS and donors. Well, it's something that Christine Chrisleib and I have talked about too. Now, to give you an idea, I was a 1099 employee for about five months. Why? <laughs> because I live in Indiana and uh, Phil Hopla, the genius accountant that they had, couldn't figure out how to work within the Indiana system to get me registered as an employee for a Michigan company, but being paid in Indiana. And the last month that I worked there, they finally got it worked out and I became a W-2 employee. And then shortly after that, I resigned. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Christine and I have thought about that too, Vincent. Thank you. Uh, let's see. All right. Michael asks, has Father Paul John Kalchuk come out and make a statement on the whole mess? Uh, no, I have never seen a statement by Father Paul um, Kalchuk. I know he follows me on X, um, but I, I haven't seen any statements heard from him or anything. So I'm sorry, I can't answer that, Michael. Dana says, maybe there are two women named Barb Toth. Well, I don't know what's going on with that. I mean, she said earlier that that was not her, that um, she did not give them permission to use her name. I'm a little miffed about this. All right. Let's see. Any other questions, everyone? Oh, this is such a... Um, Michael asked, what a Brad, Brad Eli, he's another major name at Sam, along with Jules... Gomez. Jules is writing for the new Church Militant 2.0. I am very disappointed if it's true that these people are working for Michael Voris. They're trading their integrity in for money. I don't believe Michael has changed. I don't, I mean, you can tell by those emails that it's all about him. I mean, he didn't, he, I mean, it's all about him, them paying his American Express card instead of paying the employees their severance, the employees that moved to Detroit and uprooted their lives. I can't tell you enough how disruptive, how, how betrayed these former employees, these former employees have, have, have been treated, what they're going through. Um, young kids, not a job, a mortgage, trying to find work. So, um, It's the donors, as I've always said through all of this, it's the donors and it's the former employees 
that <clears throat> have really, really suffered in all of this. And I don't mean leadership. I don't mean leadership. <clears throat> they knew what was going on. They just kept it to themselves. They kept everyone in the dark, even their precious donors. Um, let's see. How often did Mike Forrest give out Christmas bonuses? <laughs> I think they had a party one year. I don't know if there was any bonuses. Christine Chrislieb, if you're on, do you know if there were any bonuses? And then this Stop Forrest guy says, I thought he has his own lawyer. I thought he was his own lawyer. He was, but apparently he's... He's got some backers now, you know, got more people that are willing to pony up and give him money. So um, he's got a lawyer for the Delaire lawsuit, which he complained or which he takes no response, excuse me, no responsibility. in. you seen a recurring message here. He didn't take responsibility for anything. So he had thought many times. And in his little speech that he gave um, when he came clean about his sins of his past, he said he thought many times about walking away. Well, maybe it just took him a little longer to plan that walk away than he anticipated. Everybody knew. He knew the end of 2022, they were in trouble. He knew. The leadership knew. Evening news was going to save them. Well, it didn't. It didn't save them. So he knew in 2022, the, and, and by August, September, by the, um, retreat at sea in September of 2023. He knew then. The following month, he goes on another cruise by himself to, quote, write a book either the end of November or the first of, no uh, the end of October or the first of November. He comes back. He drags the staff into a two and a half hour screen session having them read off denigrating affirmation, or not affirmations, de denigrating remarks about themselves. And then, what, two weeks later, a week later, he comes out, and uh, now he's resigning? I don't know. It just seems planned to me. It just seems planned to me. And it's become a cult. Now it's become a cult. Shame on you for fooling me. Shame on me. I got that saying wrong. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. All right? I, I just cannot even. I mean, it, it's so, it's so out of control folks, as I've read all these emails, and there's more coming too. I don't have them all. There's more coming, but those are the receipts. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you to support Michael Vores or not support Michael Vores. I just want you to know the truth of what's going on because you're never going to hear it from him. 
you're never going to hear it from church militant or St. Michael's media. Nobody's going to tell you the truth. They just cover it up. <laughs> and they criticize the bishops for doing the very same thing they're doing. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Simon, in his novel, short novel he wrote to the staff about not holding Michael's sins against him, well, they sure didn't treat the priests that way and the bishops that way, did they? Oh, no, they went after them with a vengeance. They wanted to crush him. But when it happens to Michael Voris, oh, no, 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 kid gloves. Kid gloves. Yes, we have to pray for everyone involved. As a priest said to me recently, if you can't pray for Michael Boris, the, the person, pray for his soul. And that's what I am doing is praying for Boris's soul, praying for Simon's soul. But I am definitely praying for all of the former employees. All right. Um, let's see. Status fan. Christine, what's your other channel where I can learn about the facts regarding this scandal? Oh, you're here in India as well. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. Um, so it's on this channel, Eternal Life, Ch Eternal Life Plan channel. Just go to my playlist called Church Militant and you'll see all of the videos. Um, I've done live videos. So if you go to the live tab, you can see all of the live tab videos and uh, the regular videos that I may have pre-recorded and streamed out. So you can go to both sections of my YouTube channel called Eternal Life Plan on YouTube. I'm not sure what channel you're looking on because I stream this out to X, YouTube, and Facebook. So I'm not sure which channel you're on for that. Um, but go to my YouTube channel, Eternal Life Plan, and it has all of the videos on there. Okay, I hope that's helpful to you. And since you're local, you'll have to reach out. Um, and I'll And I'll post my email again for everybody. If you want to contact me, contact me at eternal life plan at gmail.com. It's very easy. Eternal life plan at gmail.com. Okay. And let me see. We've got another. Do we have any more questions? Um, let's see. Christine Chrislieb says, take down the Catholic flag in Ferndale before the LGBT Ferndale community captures it. Good point, Christine. Yeah, good point. And they may have captured it already. Okay, let's see. Uh, did I get everybody? All right. Well, um, I am going to close for now. And everyone, I really do appreciate you hanging in there with me as I, there was a lot of information and I'm sure more will be coming. Um, but the former employees have in the last four days, I would say, have just been calling like crazy talking to me and I've had other sources coming forward with a lot of this stuff too. Um, so just keep the former employees in your prayers. They're the ones that are really hurting. Michael Voris isn't. Michael Voris isn't. So I will talk to you all again. Um, thank you for supporting this channel and me. And remember, eternal life is forever. I've seen the other side. You've got to have a plan or you'll be derailed. All right.
God bless you. I hope you all had a very happy Easter and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.